home fire dancer. I've been doing fire dancing since 2000. I actually picked it up in Santa Cruz on the beach down the sea right. The way I tell people it happens is you, people usually have two experiences when they see fire dancing. They'll see it and they're like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then other people will see it and be like, oh, I'm going to do that. <laughs> There aren't a lot of places around Santa Cruz where we can fire dance, but Moran Beach and the Lighthouse, as long as I've been doing this, have always been the safe places where we're not going to bother anybody and nobody will bother us. I come here every week. Uh, before sunset, the jugglers come and the hoopers come, and once the sun sets, we light up. toy that like draws them into fire spinning and for me it was uh, contact juggling but there are so many you know there are so many different fire toys it's just like I, I mean I, I couldn't even begin to list them all because even if I listed them all there are stuff there are toys that people have like made themselves and like created on their own that they just sort of dance with it's just it's it's really cool to see all the different ways that people manipulate fire and, and move with fire and like use fire as this form of expression. a simpler, easier gateway into the arts, into the circus arts, because so many of the circus arts take years and years of training to perfect, like aerial dancing or acrobatics. I mean, most of the acrobats that you see in circus shows have been doing it since they were a little kid. Um, it takes a lot of refining, whereas poi you can pick up, and it's really more accessible to more people. I had students when I taught, I had students that were 12 years old, I had students that were 60 years old who, you know, really had a hard time with a lot of dancing, but wanted to try it, and it's just easier on the body and more, more accessible and fun. It's all movement. It's all expression of some, some inner beast that wants to come out and, and play, and they're playing and we're playing. We're all manipulators. We're all circus people. Uh, I think it takes a certain type of person to do that. So we're kind of rare. <laughs> I think people are drawn to fire and danger, and I think people are drawn to the geometry of it and the way it looks. There's a lot of kinetic energy in it, and then there's a person in there, and then there's the whole dance and, and the movement and the artistic side of it. So I don't think there's anything else quite like it that blends all those things together. Something about people dancing really close with the flame is just like people are drawn to I mean, that's, I was drawn to it for that reason. totally get in the spin zone and it's almost like your body takes over, your mind stops and you just you keep spinning, whether it's poi or hoop or if you're running or if you're a dancer, you just completely lose yourself in, in the movement and you're drawn in a spiritual sense and you're being driven by a spiritual force. And it's kind of a release just to have control over these giant fireballs, <laughs> spinning them really, really fast. city you go to that has spin jams or fire jams has some sort of community. The lighthouse community jams, it's always free and open, so it's whoever is whoever's around. And that's an easy way for other people to find us too, who might be fire spinners but don't know how to connect to the community. 
so many people see the jams and hear about them and walk by and see them. And so I often get questions, even to this day. Do you go out to the lighthouse? It's not an official thing. Anybody who wants to come spin fire comes and spins fire. Uh, there are a couple different crowds. Mori is pretty much the only constant. Mori is this guy that's been coming to the lighthouse for years, and he doesn't spin anything, but he's kind of the life and soul of the lighthouse. I love what goes on out here. I love the sense of community and camaraderie that comes out of it, and uh, it's just such a good time and such simple, pure fun. Uh, makes my week. There's something about spinning fire that sets us apart from the crowd a little bit and really connects us. We had some really somber and spiritual moments out there where I was like fire dancing for peace and there's a couple hundred people around me holding candles. I mean, it's really been a community space and there'll be fun party nights and there'll be really quiet nights and then there's drizzly nights where like a couple people come out and you get your costume all money because you're rolling around the ground fire dancing. <laughs> fire dancing attracts a really down-to-earth type of crowd. All very trusting, very open, very excited about sharing with each other. And that, I think that was one of the first things that did attract me to the fire dancing community and it's definitely one of the things that keeps me involved. So back when I first started fire dancing, the draw to the fire was huge and you wanted to fire dance all the time and become really intimately acquainted with the flame and how it reacts. But now that I've been doing it so long, I am concerned about the toxic effects of the use of fuel. Um, it's, it seems kind of frivolous sometimes because it's not an essential use of fossil fuels. Uh, and I feel it in my lungs when I dance. And having had cancer last year, I'm really concerned about toxins in my body. So I really try not to use fuel and light up unless I'm performing, unless it's essential. You know, you're so passionate about it that even even when you acknowledge the risks, you're not going to stop. You just can't. It's just, it's too, it's too addicting. <laughs> <laughs> Their expression comes out in the art. They can't tell you why. They can't tell you what they're doing. They're just doing it. They're expressing it by doing it. As long as I remember, it's always been a place that the other fire dancers knew that it's a good place to come to, to find other people playing. That's the purpose of uh, Fire University. It's called Fire University. Uh, if people want to learn a trick, they go up to somebody and say, hey, I know you did this cool thing this one time, here's what it's like, teach me how to do it. And they're like, sure, and they stop, they put everything they're doing down, pick up whatever prop you're talking about and break it down for you, because it took them, I don't know, three weeks to figure out how to do it. They're really happy to just teach you. I don't know what my life would be like if I didn't have the lighthouse be pretty dull, I guess.